So you've decided to pick up Solaris and you jumped into your first game. You find yourself on this menu, the Select Empire screen. Now there may be a couple of things on here that may not be part of your game because I'm running a couple of mods in the background. However, uh, you will originally see a list of alien species that you can select. For instance, the United Nations of Earth or the Commonwealth of Man or the Tsin Empire. Empire. And all of these are basically pre-built for you to play around with and they all have their own little storylines and the little events. For instance, the uh, the Commonwealth of Men, uh, they are humans that have spread out into the galaxy on a colony ship long, uh, many eons into the past, and they need to find out where the other colony ships are. So that's, for instance, their storyline. The United Nations of Earth, they've got their own storyline. Normally, I think it is about the uh, Voyager probes that you need to retrieve them. There's a bunch of other ones as well, and they all have their own little uh, mix and match, and they can instantly see on what the kind of empire they are or what sort of type of game you can expect by looking at their empire name. For instance, United Nations of Earth is a re uh, rep uh, representative democracy, which means a democratic, and that's the sort of thing that you can expect there. The Commonwealth of Men, on the other hand, is a constitutional dic dictatorship, which means that they are a little bit more combat-oriented. Uh, the, uh, for instance, Divine Empire, this is an interesting one where you have the Imperial Cult and the Aristarchical Elite, and, but we'll get into that a little bit. If you don't want to play as any of these guys, you can go in and create your own species. So let's go and create our own species, shall we? As... Uh, we're going to have a fun time here. So welcome on the species creation screen. Now, if you're playing for the very first time, I highly suggest that you play as one of the prefab uh, species. However, if you want to mess around with uh, creating your own species and see what it does and how it works, uh, then yeah, then this will be the guide for you. First of all, appearance. It doesn't really matter. Uh, this is all fluff content. It is not particularly important for the context of the actual game. If you want to mess around with it, go right ahead. Uh, I have, for instance, uh, the Plantoid appearance, which is uh, a mini uh, expansion. And basically, all it does is just add a bunch of stuff uh, to the game that is not particularly interesting. But we've got the standard humanoids, the mammals, etc. For the sake of uh, consistency, Let's pick a human and move on. We have our species name, arguably one of the more important things that you can do. You can write your name in here, what the plural of that name is and what the adjective is. Of course, you can just roll and there you go. It will just randomize or we can even generate a adjective. If you want to write like a bio, if you want to do like a very in-depth sort of role-playing campaign, you can totally write down your biography here. Uh, Continental Earth. Uh, shit was cold, let's go to space. There you go, that's the biography of this species, the Civelli, which we are in the midst of creating. Now we can hit next, and we find ourselves with our name lists. Uh, the ship prefix, what this means is every single ship name will be having a prefix, such as, um, an example of this would be the, uh, the British Royal Fleet, such as the HMS, so HMS Hood or HMS um, Arc Royale, or the United States Fleet, which is the USS, uh, for instance, well, Enterprise, or Nimitz, or Zumwalt, or anything along those lines. So that's your prefix. And then you've got your um, your l l lists of names that you can pick. You can totally um, make your own list as well. And you can easily mod those in, or just download one from the uh, from the list. And I got the hive mind in here as well. I did not I did not know about this one. You can also completely omit the prefix, of course, and be done with that. So, however, for uh, this one, we will uh, just do ISS. Next, uh, we get to the first important uh, thing within the species system, which is traits. So traits in combination with civics and empire, as well as ethics, basically build the core gameplay aspects of your game. Personally, uh, traits are very important in order to set up your initial goals for your species. For instance, if you want to generate a species which is for instance agrarian agrarian will give you uh, an additional amount of food however um, what i'm going to do here i'm going to skip this step and we will get back to this and i'll tell you why because i don't feel that we really need to touch any of our racial traits until we know our 
government ethics. It's a bit of a roundabout way of doing it. However, I, it will make sense because uh, due to the amount of choices that we have here, uh, and comparatively to the amount of choices that we have over our, over at our government ethics system, we can more um, easily max out our species into the right direction. So, let's just skip this for now. A ruler. We can choose a ruler, whether or not they're male or female. Their phenotype. Uh, that is their uh, their race, basically, as in their uh, individual sub-races. Their hairstyle, of course. Ooh, look at that glorious beard. Isn't that awesome? I think so. We can give them some other clothes. Look at this. Isn't this, a, this is like Time Lord-esque? Uh, we can give them room backgrounds. In 1.6, you will have uh, even more room backgrounds. Uh, you can give them a name. You can give them a title uh this is their title their title of their heir so let's say supreme there you go and you can set their heir title if you want to as well let's move on to the for mo first most important thing uh within the game aside from traits we'll get to traits and that is picking our home world so let's pick a home world so let's just roll the dice we can pick in uh we can pick our own uh, system if we want to or we can go towards starting solar system. And with starting solar system, we can pick a few pre-generated solar systems. Deneb as well as Sol. Now, Sol and Deneb are two prefab systems for some of the prefab uh, cultures. Obviously, the United Nations of Earth has Sol, which is the Latin term for our solar system. Sol, solar system. The star is called Sol. And the Neb, which is a blue giant, which is for the uh, other variant of the humans. Now, then we get to pick our planet type. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. You will always spawn with several small uh, planets of the same type nearby, just so you have somewhere to expand. However, for the sake of flavor, you can pretty much do anything. Of course, you can change any planet into the game to your preferred type, which means that you... Um, yeah, basically can mess around. In all honesty, this this it this is all fluff. It doesn't really matter uh, the kind of uh, planet you're on. Uh, you'll have more than enough planets to pick from within the game. Then we have city appearance. This is all background stuff. We can pick any sort of background you want. Again, it is not really important. All it does is in the communication window or in our government screen, you'll be able to, be able to see what the background looks like. So go for the one that looks the most badass, which is, of course, the reptilian one, in my personal opinion, and move on. Then we get to what I personally feel is the most important part of of building your species and after this we'll be heading back towards traits and this is where we set up our ethics and our civics now ethics are the core guideline morality for your species within the game uh, these will pretty much set from the start of the game what sort of direction you're going to go into and this is pretty much where your species get defined so for instance we have the ethics wheel now if you have utopia in the middle of the wheel you will find hive mind uh, if you don't have utopia obviously uh, you won't um, then around it we've got the blue circle the blue circle is a standard version ethic for instance militarist a militarist nation will generate a more fire rate for your ships so you will shoot slightly faster um, it will also kind of be designed for a species that wants to go down the military path. We got xenophobic, which is for species that do not like other species. Uh, they don't want to be in touch with other species. So that is an option there. Uh, they get more rivalry and influence gain and more border range, which is quite useful because if they don't like other species, then they will like to displace them a lot easier. Then we got Elegitarian, which is a government form that allows for utopian living standards, which I believe is the only one in the game that allows for this. It uh, increases influence gain and consumer good cost is reduced. Pretty useful and kind of kind of nice, actually. Then we got materialist. Uh, this is based around technology and robots. Uh, you will be able to do faster research as well as uh, have a reduced maintenance cost on your robots. Then we have pacifists. This is for the kind of species that doesn't want to go to war. Uh, basically a federation style uh, system and basically allowing for a lot of growth internally while working together with others. Uh, monthly unity plus 20%, extremely powerful, as well as two core systems, which is very good for a starting player 
Um, I highly suggest that you start out as potentially a pacifist player. Uh, you have more core systems to, to play around with, and you can do a lot more within the context of the game uh, without having to mess around with sectors. Uh, Xenophile. Xenophile loves the aliens. They love the Xenos, and they will have a hell of a time together with Federations, as they will have a, a much easier time making Federations and Alliances because of their Trust Grove modifier being increased by 25%. Basically, other species will trust them quicker. Diplomatic influence cost, for instance, will also be reduced. Therefore, you will be able to uh, bribe other species a lot easier with minerals, for instance. Authoritarian, which allows the caste system, which is the exact opposite of egalitarian uh, system. Uh, basically, this is a species that will control... Uh, you can have a reduced resettlement cost as well as a reduction in slave unrest. This is basically designed for any sort of species with a lot of slaves and direct control over their population. Spiritualist. Spiritualist is the only, spe only type of ethic that can research psionic technologies. They're also the only ones that can build temples and they have to outlaw AI. Their empire modifications is that they have reduced unrest on planets and their government ethic attraction is plus 15%. So that basically means is any sort of faction within your empire will have an easier time getting into control uh, as long as you support them because of the government ethics uh, attraction. Uh, around the wheel are the orange versions, which is the fanatic variants, which basically give a flat additional bonus. Generally, it's double of the original. Uh, for instance, I will go to pacifist, monthly unity is plus 20, core system plus 2, uh, the monthly modifier here is 4. Now, this is the thing. You can pick uh, three of these, or two depending on what you do. So the inner circle is worth one point. The outer circle is worth two points. The uh, hive mind is worth three. So what you can easily do here is have a militarist nation that is xenophobic and material materialist, effectively creating a uh, militarist empire that hates everybody and works really, really hard to find new find out new ways to kill the xenos. Uh, well, however, we could also remove this and this one, uh, and increase this one from milit uh, from materialist to fanatic materialist, which means that we are now a empire that likes to fight and also likes to increase the ability for us to fight by research. Of course, this works the other way around as well, where we can have a hardcore military uh, military empire that can fight a little, that does a little bit of research on the side. Now, on the side, you may have noticed that we have uh, this little uh, setup here, a little scroll system which is labeled civics. Civics are individual modifiers for your species that you can swap in and out throughout the game. You can do the same thing with ethics, but it's a little bit easier for civics. And basically, these are flavor modifiers for your empire. They give you a small bonus on top of what you already have to better steer your empire for role-playing purposes. For instance, in this particular case, we're fanatic militarists and uh, materialists, which means that we can have citizen service because we are in some degree material uh, militarist and we are not fanatic xenophiles. And on top of that, we are democratic and oligarchic, but we'll get to that very shortly. So what does this mean? Well, this one means that we will have an increased naval capacity, and this is obviously a direct reference to Starship Troopers. Would you like to know more? Then, of course, we got a whole bunch of other ones. There's a separate video about this available on the channel. Feel free to take a look at that and see what is good. Uh, play around with it a little bit. This is all flavor-related stuff. So... Uh, we can also change our authority. Our authority is the type of government that we are running. We can be Democrats, where we have an election every 10 years. We can be an oligarchy, where an election is held every 40 to 50 years. Uh, a, dictor a dictatorship, where the ruler is for life. And the emperor, imperial, where the basically... We have a line of secession. Now, every single one of these rulers will give you bonuses depending on your empire. Um, you can also pick whatever you want. There's a lot of flavor-related stuff in here. And some civics are only available to some types of authority. Now that we've done all of this stuff, and let's say we grab, say, technocracy and... 
let's say, uh, distinguish uh, cutthroat politics. No, not cutthroat politics here. Uh, let's pick mining guilds. So what does this do? So mining guilds, we get a plus 10 modifier to uh, to mineral production, and we get additional research alternatives. So what do we do now? We go back into the traits window, because we know what our bonuses are going to be like. So now we can spec our species genetics infrastructure to be uh, complementary to that. Now, in the game, anything can change. You can genetically modify yourself, you can change your political style, you can change your civics. However, at the start of the game, it's generally useful to have them all kind of min-max themselves out. So, for instance, we have a mineral bonus, so let's add another mineral bonus. This is going to cost us two. One thing that is important to note here, that we can only pick a total of five ever. Now what this means is is that uh, at the start of the game we get two trade points. Every single trade costs a certain amount of points, like whether or not it's two or one. So for instance, if we pick industrious, we now have zero trade points. However, what we can also do, and for those of you who've played games like um, uh, Galsiv or Galsiv 2 or Galsiv 3, you will know if some uh, you will recognize the system. You can add negative modifiers to your species, which will give you additional points to spend on other things. So negatives gives you points, whereas positives will retract points. So for instance, let's say we want to add slow breeders. Slow breeders is pretty damn good to have, as uh, there's a lot of offsets for it very early on in the game. It gives you another point because you've picked a negative modifier. Slow learners, leaders experience gain. I personally wouldn't go for it. Non-adaptive is not that great either. Uh, let's go and take sedentary solitary. Let's pick solitary. It has only minus five happiness bonus. We can easily offset that. And all of a sudden, we have two more points to, to, to play around with. So what? We were a researcher species as well as mining. Well, we already have industrious. Let's add intelligence to that. And all of a sudden, we will have an additional bonus to physics output. And if we quickly take a look here, we are materialists, which means that we have a plus 5% uh, research output plus mining guilds, which is a mineral output. It means that our genetic traits complement our civics really nicely in combination with our ethics. Now, that is effectively it when it comes to our species generation. We can generate an empire, the League of Proznak. It's generally based around the species name. We add a cool flag. Of course, there's tons of mods available for this. Um, let's just grab something simple like this. Then we get to ships. And ships and starting stuff is a interesting thing to talk about. For instance, we have our starting weapons. We can start with energy weapons, projectile weapons, and missile weapons. Missile weapons is rather interesting. It did get buffed in 1.5.1. I haven't done a lot of research about this one yet, so there may be a couple of modifiers involved there. The one thing that is important, that missiles are very difficult to counter in the very early game because of the terminology of point defense. Well, we'll talk about this in the fleet designer video. Uh, projectile weapons are just giant slugs in space being shot at you at high speed. Energy weapons are lasers, basically. FTL method, uh, we will do a separate video about FTL method. Warp travel, uh, which is probably the easiest one to get into. I highly recommend that you play as, use this as a starting player. Hyperspace travel, in my personal opinion, is the funnest and most strategic way to play. However, considering warp travel, if you want to wrap your head around the systems of the game, uh, warp and hyperspace are basically the same, except for warp, you can go anywhere you want, whereas on hyperspace, you move a little bit quicker, but the you can only go down certain lines. So basically, a road system. You can only go from point point A to point B, and point B to point A, whereas in warp travel, you can go wherever the hell you want. Wormhole travel, I do not recommend uh, doing at all for a beginning player. Uh, play a couple other games first before you go for wormhole travel. Uh, it can be... The ships that you can build with them are relatively cheap because you do not require additional energy for the wormhole generator. However, um... It requires a lot of in infrastructure style thinking, and I just don't recommend it for a starting player. Then we get to 
Uh, ship appearance. Uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff here. Uh, whatever looks cool, I would go for the reptilians because they look awesome. Or mammalian if you're so inclined. I got plantoids here as well. So let's save this. There we go. It will now be automatically saved. You could also gone have for done. So if we hit done right here, we come towards the game D setup system and we can hit play and go straight in. Or we can go back and come back towards the select empire menu where we find our new species on the ledger with a, well, a phoenix next to it. And if you highlight it, it says empire spawning allowed. What this means is, is that if you've built a species and you've saved them, and then later on you play as a different species, you can have the chance of uh, the other species to spawn with you into the game. So basically, you could build all your adversaries at the start of the game and then play against them. This is a chance of, if you click it one more time, you'll see a little padlock on top of it, it will force spawn it. The, if you build a, if you go for instance here at the Terran Idiliac, we will be guaranteed to find the League of Prosnak versus our species, or at least they will spawn somewhere within the galaxy. This is a general overview of how to create a new species for the very first time. I hope that you had a lot of fun with it and that you understand the mechanics behind it and what you should do in order to build your perfect species. Mess around with government ethics first. Have some fun with it. Try to build a society that works for you and then... Set, your, set up your genetic traits to complement those societal changes. Once again, everything in the game can change. You can change your genetics or infrastructure. You can change your government. You can change your ethics. You can change your civics. It is all in the game over long periods of time. It's all about that initial setup. And, uh, well, in my personal opinion, the games are made or broken within this screen. I hope this was informative and that you had a fun time actually watching this and that you understand a little bit better on how to start up your very first species. I'm aware that this video was a little bit longer than anticipated, but there's a lot of stuff we go have to go over in order to do all of this. If you liked this video, please hit that like button. If you did not, the dislike button is right there as well. And if you're really inclined to do so and you want to watch more of these sort of videos, the subscribe button is right down there. Give that a hit and you will be updated whenever a video goes live. My name has been Acevec and until next time, take good care of yourselves and each other.